Hey everyone! Today we will be making our blood orange and goji berry, safflower and red palm butter 10 minute hot process soap. So our ingredients include our oils, which are safflower oil, red palm butter, castor oil, and coconut oil. We have our distilled water, our sodium hydroxide, and over here we have our optional additives. So we always like to include these in our recipe. We have sorbitol, um, cetyl alcohol, and on the bottom we have our post-cooked super fat. So between the break when this is covered, we'll melt this together in our fragrance. Inside of our oils, we've already put our chelator, and for our chelator, we're going to be using sodium gluconate. So if you've got hard water, this really helps. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and put on the rest of my PPE. I've got long sleeves, closed-toed shoes, pants, goggles, and I'm going to put on a respirator during the live portion and when mixing. So I don't talk during those moments. We know that we're being safe. Let's tuck our sleeves into our gloves. Perfect. Oh, another optional additive. So we always do the four. Sodium lactate, which is in our lye solution. Sorbitol, acetyl alcohol, and a chelator.
We are going to cover this with plastic and come back in a couple minutes. As our soap begins to rise, we'll allow it to keep going for just a couple more seconds. And you'll notice how from the beginning it was kind of a more of a yellow color and when it turns to gel phase it turns into this orangish color. It's still got a little bit of almost the quote unquote the applesauce stage so we're going to use our immersion blender one more time. Perfect. And we'll cover this one more time and we'll go heat our post cook super or post cook additives up. Actually, we're gonna add our sorbitol right now. You can add this to the oils at the beginning, you can add it at the end, you could add it to your life solution. The choice is kind of yours on that one. We've melted the acetyl alcohol in our post cook super fat. We can add that. And then our blood orange and goji fragrance. Perfect, now we can mold it.
perfect and we will be back for the cut. In our cup, we have melted some of our 10 minute honey melt and pour base. Um, we're going to make a video for that, so make sure you look for that soon. We're going to add a little bit of mica. And use a paintbrush. This gives um, solid color soaps a little bit, um, a little bit more decoration. I personally think they look really pretty when they do it this way. And then we will also later use a soap stamp with the same colored mica. You want to do that when your soaps are hard enough. If you do it when they are too soft, you'll get pieces that stick in your stamp, especially if they're more intricate designs like that. Probably should have put a little bit more mica in here, but that's okay. We can do a double layer.
And then we'll go back to the first one just to show you what a double layer looks like. And then we'll probably have to remelt our soap just because it's starting to thicken up. Yeah, we'll actually do that. But anyways, so these are our finished safflower and red palm butter soaps. They are incredibly mild. Um, they've got a beautiful bubbly lather. If you are looking for a softening recipe, this is definitely the one that I would go with. I mean, my hands always just holding the bars. My hands feel really smooth. Um, like I said, we'll do the beautiful copper micro tops for all of them, and then we'll add our beautiful soap, soap stamp afterwards. And it makes a very simple, very elegant, very pretty bar with a softening recipe. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks so much. We are going to finish our safflower and red palm butter soap bars. We're going to finish them by adding a beautiful soap stamp. Um, we custom make our soap stamps, we create all of the designs, and then we send them to a company called Etch It Las Vegas, which is located in the U.S. They are a small family owned business, um, beautiful soap stamps. They also offer a discount for all of our ultimate guide to soap students. So keep that in mind if you're looking for custom soap stamps. So our soaps were cut and they have been sitting for three days. That for us and this specific recipe allows them to be just hard enough so that they can be stamped without pulling up any of the little soap pieces. So instead of just using a plain stamp, we're going to use mica. So to do this, there's a couple different ways to do it, but we're going to show you the way that we do it. Um, we just use the mica and the stamp, but you can also use rubbing alcohol. You can even use more of the melt and pour base like we did at the top. It's kind of a, a personal choice there. So we always like to keep water and a toothbrush nearby just in case any little soap pieces get stuck. If you're in a kitchen, you don't need to do that or somewhere with a sink, you can just use the water supply that's nearby. So you can use a piece of paper or a paper towel. And we are going to spread a little bit of mica. That way we can dip our soap stamp into it. I absolutely love this color. It's so pretty and sparkly. Spread it out so that the entire face of the soap stamp fits in it. Maybe a little bit more for this one. Then we're going to take our stamp, place it in, and see how it covers the design completely. Do a little bit more. If there's any excess, see how there's a little bit of excess on this one? You can tap it off. And then we're simply going to place a stamp in the middle of the soap and press firmly. So that our design completely goes into the bar. And then pull straight out. And there we have our beautiful soap stamp and our mica. So let's go ahead and do one more. Again, tap to get any excess off. Place the stamp firmly and in the center of the bar. straight up. And there we go. We're going to finish the rest of these bars and that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.